Hello and welcome to another object-oriented programming tutorial in C Sharp. In this tutorial, we will complete the class employee with one property and one method. And we will learn about how you can utilize the property within the method. Again, this is only the step one. Slowly and gradually, as we expand on this class, we will learn more things about object-oriented programming. So in this tutorial, you will expect to learn how to declare a class property, how to use the property within a method, and then how to declare an instance of the class which will help you call the method in the class. First of all, in the last tutorial, we learned about private, protected, public, and internal. Properties are generally declared private set though, so that nobody from outside can directly access them. So we are declaring a property called ID number. Now, we will declare a method called info. In the info method, we will display the employee ID. So console.writeLine employee ID is ID number. After you've completed the class with one property and a method that taps into that property, make sure you save the changes. If you ever see an asterisk next to the name, that means the changes have not been saved, like you see with program.cs. Now let's switch over to program.cs, which is where my main method is. In the main method, we will now learn how you can declare an instance of the class, which is a variable of class type. If I simply say employee EMP1, now what I have done over here is I have what we call declared a null pointer of employee type. What exactly does that mean? That means I've declared somebody called EMP1 whose data type is employee, but it has neither allocated memory nor is usable. So it's null. Pointer means it's pointing nowhere in the memory. Therefore, whenever you declare an instance, you want to avoid the situation if you want to use the instance right away. In some cases, you want to declare the instance and then later on you want to instantiate it so that you're not holding on to memory unnecessarily. So here, the process of instantiation, instantiation is a process that allows you to declare and allocate memory for the class instance. So we type the word new after the word equals, which allocates memory on behalf of the instance provided by the name of the class. Now, technically speaking, it's not really a class. It is a method or a function. As you can see the parentheses, it has the exact same name as the class. It is called a constructor. Constructor is a special method in an object-oriented programming language uh, inside a class it is named after a class and its job is to initialize or give the very first value to class properties. Now that the instance has been instantiated, now I can use this instance and notice as soon as I use the period delimiter, among all the methods it can call, it can call info, which is the method that we declared in the employee class. So now, if I call info right now, the way it is, and let me hold the screen, and now let's run the program so that you can see what is the output. So we are, have instantiated an instance, and we are calling the info method using this instance. And as you can see, I am able to access the method. It says employee ID zero because inside the employee class, I never 
assigned any value to ID number. It's still set to zero. That's why when I run this program, I get an output of zero. Now let me stop the program and let's change the value of ID number to a different value and let's rerun the program. And you will notice that now it says that the employee ID is 100. Also, there is another way of displaying the output and that is in C Sharp, just like Java or other languages, you could have placeholders. And the first placeholder is always zero, and then one, two, three, like that. And outside of the double quote, you can put a comma, and then followed by comma, you can make a list of all the variables. So if you if you have, let's say, three variables, then you can have a curly braces zero, curly braces one, curly braces two, and then with comma delimited, you can list three variables, and each one of them will gonna fall in the same order in which you list them. Uh, so now when I run the program, you will notice that it gives me the exact same output as before. So this is just another way of displaying the output. So in the next tutorial, we will continue with this class and we will learn more about object-oriented programming as to how you can declare multiple instances of a class. Catch you in the next tutorial. Bye-bye.